Hello, my name is Josh McQueen, and this is my presentation for HIUS 512. It's on the um, Seven Years' War and how that led into uh, France's involvement in the American Revolution. I kind of did this final presentation as a sort of hybrid interview educational presentation. So there's an interview portion where I'm asking people um, some questions about what they learned about the American Revolution, the Seven Years' War, France's involvement, to see how well our, you know, our education system over the years has taught people about these, uh, taught people about these significant topics. Then uh, there's a presentation portion, which will be recorded for the this portion, um, me individually on the computer, but I gave it to the people in person. Then. There is a post-interview question section where I'm asking the same people uh, two, two or so questions about what they learned from the presentation, how they feel about um, like the conclusions, France's involvement. I hope you guys enjoy this presentation. Hello, I'm here with John McQueen. I'm going to ask him a few questions about um, the American Revolution. How well do you feel you were taught in school about the American Revolution? Yeah, mediocre. Mediocre? Uh, comparatively, how well do you feel you were taught about the Seven Years' War? Mm, even less. Even less? Yes, sir. Okay. So based on what you learned previously, do you believe there's any significant relationship between these two 18th century wars? No. No. Okay. Did you learn about the Franco-American alliance during the American Revolution? That Franco-American alliance being French-American. I, I knew that the French was helping. The French were helping the Americans during yeah. the American Revolution, but uh, other than that, I don't really remember all of that. Okay. Do you feel that you were properly informed um, by your educators of the reasons that France became involved in the United States War? And if so, do you happen to remember any of the reasons? Uh, I would have to say I probably was not properly informed, or if I was, I wasn't paying attention. But um, no, I don't remember any of the reasons that the French became involved. I'm here with Nikki. Nikki, I'm going to ask you some questions about the American Revolution. No. <laughs> so, how well do you feel you were taught in school about the American Revolution? Not real well. Not real well? No. Comparatively, how well do you feel you were taught about the Seven Years' War? Not at all. Not at all? Nope. So, this question. Based on what you learned previously, do you believe there's any significant relationship between these two 18th century wars? Yes, because I've learned a lot from you. Okay. Okay, so, so do you want me to say something? No. Okay. Right. Did you uh, learn about the Franco-American alliance during the American Revolution? Franco-American? Uh, like French-American. Oh, yes, yes, because they came in and they helped hmm. the, the citizens, not citizens, but they came in and they helped the patriots. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that you were properly informed of the reasons France became involved in the United States' war? And if so, do you happen to remember any of the reasons? Well, I know Ben Franklin played a role. He went over there and he convinced them to come help us. I'm here with Bailey and I'm going to ask you some questions about the American Revolution. So. How well do you feel you were taught in school about the American Revolution? Pretty well in fourth grade, but then after that, not very well at all. Okay. Comparatively, how well do you feel you were taught about the Seven Years' War? Not very well at all. <laughs> Based on what you learned previously, do you believe there was any significant relationship between these two 18th century wars? During the Seven Years' War, didn't... Was it France reached out to the United States for help and they were like, hey, remember when we helped you in the American Revolution? And they were like, yeah. And they were like, remember when you said that you were going to help us? And the United States was like, yeah, but we're not going to. Seven Years' War occurred before the American Revolution. Dang. Yeah. That did happen in some war, though, I think right? it was the French Revolution. <laughs> All right. Um, then, did you learn about the Franco-American alliance during the American Revolution? Franco-American being French-American. French-American. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. 
Do you feel that you were properly informed of the reasons that France became involved in the United States' war? And if so, do you happen to remember any of the reasons? I don't know if I was properly informed. I was always just under the impression that France and England had this long-standing rivalry, and so any enemy to England was a friend of France. Hello everyone, my name is Josh McQueen, and this is my presentation for HIUS 512 uh, on on the brink of an 18th century world war, the factors that led to France joining the American Revolution during the aftermath of the Seven Years' War. This is the same presentation I gave to the people in the previous video, um, but like I wanted to do it also on here so that it would be easier to watch when you're on a computer because it was a lot harder to film when I'm talking to people. Um, but they got the same information from this presentation. <clears throat> so what was the focus of this research? This research focused on how the French loss against the British in the Seven Years' War eventually fueled a desire for France to weaken Britain by forming an alliance with the United States during the American Revolution. This research attempted to examine the through line from France's point of view in the aftermath of their defeat as well as address the other viewpoints of the significant uh, involved groups that played a hand in France's eventual involvement in the American Revolution. Various primary and secondary sources were utilized throughout in order to build a foundational framework and bolster arguments. The goal of this research was to use historical methods uh, to discover how the Seven Years' War and its aftermath, if at all, led to France's involvement uh, in another conflict against Britain only a few decades later during the American Revolution. The major countries that we'll be focused on are of course France, uh, the United States, uh, but back when it was the 13 colonies, uh, and Great Britain. So my thesis was that Britain's victory over France during the Seven Years' War was one of the most world-changing events of all time, altering the world powers, creating dissent between Britain and its colonies, and planting a desire within France to weaken Britain, eventually culminating in the creation of one of the most important factors that led to the United States' victory, the American Revolution. This factor was France's voluntary involvement in the the conflict against Britain. Now, might even be the most important factor. Sorry. <clears throat> so the Seven Years' War. It has been described by many historians as the most uh, important event to occur in the 18th in 18th century North America. Uh, this war actually shaped American history as well as the histories of Europe and the Atlantic world and is viewed by many to be far more significant than the War of American Independence. This was because the Seven Years' War resulted in the decisive defeat of one belligerent and a dramatic rearrangement of the balance of powers, creating a desire for revenge that would drive French foreign policy and European affairs for two decades. Some historians also point out that the Seven Years' War caused a chain of causation that without the war, American independence surely would have long delayed. Now, you'll see some reasons throughout this presentation on why historians might say that. Like, um, there's, throughout you learn about various factors that occurred in the aftermath of the Seven Years' War, and that might imply reasons why uh, American independence might have been delayed or never happened. So, one of my main sources, um, actually the source that uh, made me want to do a paper kind of combining the Seven Years' War and the American Revolution was Crucible of War, the Seven Years' War and the Fate of the em of Empire in British North America, 1754 to 1766. This is Fred Anderson's book, uh, and it serves as a, a significant source for the research due to its strong coverage of the Seven Years' War and its aftermath. Throughout the book, Anderson breaks down the various uh, rivalries and emphasizes the important role this war played. Uh, Anderson's main argument is the fact that although the Seven Years' War remains in the American consciousness uh, as a kind of hazy backdrop to the revolution, many might not even know about it or care. Uh, 
Um, this view often underestimates the Seven Years War as an event that decisively shaped American history. And that's what the book looks like. Sorry. Um, next page. Then I had this source. It was David Sirrett's article, American Colonial Governments and the Raising of Provincial Troops During the Seven Years' War. It was published in the Journal of the Society for American Historical Research, and it attempts to re-examine commonly held beliefs about the Seven Years' War. More specifically, Sirrett challenges the belief that the Seven Years' War was a conflict fought and won by the British Army. And the various Americans who do appear on the scene are usually minor players. Uh, Seert argues that actually without American military power, uh, which was typically made up of militias um, and provincial troops, the forces of the British could not have won the Seven Years' War. With many of the colonies funding the, the military efforts themselves, rather than Britain funding the American uh side of the war the colonies actually had to like raise their own taxes and juggle their economies and judge other ongoings to make sure that they could pay for this war so um this required members of colonial governments to learn to work within the limits of what was possible while also answering to the american voters especially on the matters of taxation when mobilizing troops Seward notes that it was the inability of the British to come to terms with the political realities of America that confused and beclouded all the problems surrounding the raising of American forces during the Seven Years' War and left them unable to comprehend those same uh, issues when they reemerged in the 1760s and 70s, ultimately leading to the American Revolution. I just found that extremely interesting. Um, I also had... The Seven Years' War, uh, War in the French Economy. It was a book chapter in the Seven Years' War in the Old Regime in France, the econ economic and financial toll. Uh, in this chapter, it, James Riley uh, mentions that although historians disagree about the economic effects of the Old Regime Wars in general, these wars seriously damaged trade. Uh, so Riley states that there's no better example of this than France in the Seven Years' War, especially since the most dynamic sector of the old regime economy in France was trade. So then he takes a deep dive into France's economy before, during, after the Seven Years' War, um, and there's all these charts and everything. I would have included more if this was more economic focused, but, um, I think it's just good to go over how the economy is affected. So eventually, uh, so throughout the war, the British Navy often blocked the commerce of France, which battered the economies of France's maritime centers. Eventually, the task of shipping would fall into the hands of other like, neutral nations. Um, war cost France heavy losses in capital ships, goods, added transaction costs, and it compounded the speculative element in trade. This caused some economic struggles within the con country, compounding the existing resentment towards British, uh, especially during the post-war period. So the aftermath of the Seven Years' War, how did it affect France? Um, in the aftermath of this war, France felt embarrassed on the world stage. This embarrassment was only worsened when France was forced to sign a peace treaty with the British that was designed to embarrass them more. Um, this treaty took France's commerce and credit in India, so they're gone from India, uh, it took away the territories of Canada, Louisiana, Isle Royale, uh, Acadia, and Senegal, um, so they're losing tons of their colonies. Furthermore, France's allies were dismayed. Their, uh, economy was hurt, as we previously mentioned. Their ambassadors were shamed. I read in, I believe it was C.H. Van Tyne's source at the bottom, that like, when, it, when they were in other countries, the ambassadors had to follow, follow behind British ambassadors to, in some form of embarrassing them. Their ports were constantly surveillanced, which we'll get to later, and their place at the top of the food chain was gone, and their pride was destroyed. All of this was done by a nation smaller than their own. The French people now desire revenge. 
As they worked to rebuild, thoughts of revenge would linger in their mind. How did it affect the British Empire? In the aftermath of the Seven Years' War, Britain found itself victorious. However, they also discovered that this war was not only the furthest reaching conflict it had ever fought, but also the most expensive, costing more than 100 million pounds. This immense cost led Britain to, uh, to centralizing their, I guess to centralize their empire and raise money directly from the colonies. Um, so historians like Justin Du Rivage argue that this became a turning point in the relationship between Britain and its colonies. Therefore, this situation offers important insight into the American Revolution. Note that Britain started uh, raising taxes because of the cost of the war um, and how that affected them. But earlier on, we discussed that a lot of the war on the American front, when it, where it was called the French and Indian War, a lot of that was paid for by the American colonies themselves. They had to raise their own taxes then. So you could see that they kind of felt sc screwed on two fronts because of that. Um, so examining the period between the Seven Years' War and American Revolution, along with the taxes levied and the laws created, provides historians with important contextual information to better understand the factors that led to war in the colonies. So this is an example of a British tax stamp from the time period um, between the Seven Years' War and the American Revolution. They were often put on items such as documents, newspapers, and playing cards. Um, and I got this from the Library of Congress website. Uh, so, the stack, stack Amped Congress. So, many American colonists met in 1765 in response to the creation of the Stap, st sorry, Stamp Act. Um, and this was important because it was it, it was showing the rising tensions. The uh, American colonies were now being taxed in different ways. The stamp tax was one of the most prevalent, and other acts were being created. And it, it this this Congress met, and it consisted of delegates whose goal it was to petition the king and the government to repeal the tax. So it's just like. It's not to the level of revolution, but you can see the tensions rising as the British government tries to make back its, its loss by taxing the colonists, and the colonists don't feel represented enough to be taxed that way. They wrote up this paper called the Declaration of Rights and Grievances um, in 1765. It was written with the help of the Stamp Act Congress in response to the Stamp and Tea Acts. Uh, the Declaration of Rights and Grievances raised points of colonial protest to these new laws, um, and I think there were like 14 points and stuff. The colonists believed that these new acts were passed without the consideration of colonial approval. This kind of alludes to the idea of no taxation without representation, since there were no uh, colonists or any representation from the colonies in British Parliament. They felt that there was, they were not justly represented, and therefore they could not um, be taxed because they were unable to vote on the matter, you know, or even put their two cents in. The outbreak of the American Revolution, so as we all know, tensions began to rise between the British and its colonies, eventually culminating in the outbreak of the American Revolution. The United States uh, was not as powerful and self-sustaining as the British Empire and they did not yet have an alliance with a strong nation like France. However, the overall public reaction in France to the Declaration of Independence was positive due to over the overwhelming resentment and growing desire for revenge within the country. Before a full-fledged alliance could be established, the United States would need to prove itself to France, uh, France's leaders, and France could still, still help out in other ways during the meantime. So what was French involvement in the American Revolution like before 1778. Although France was not directly involved in, with the conflict, France attempted to provide aid to the United States, uh, although this was done secretly. In fact, it is estimated that the majority of guns fired on the British at Saratoga, which we'll get to, 
were French guns. This aid did not come just in the form of guns, but also in the form of munitions, massive fleets, uh, massive funds, a fleet, uh, and eventually an army, but not quite yet. That's post-1778. Um, although much of this was done secretly, this showed that the French actually involved themselves in the conflict. They were working to provide Americans with the tools to take down the British. The Battle of Saratoga. It is seen by historians as the decisive battle in the evolution of the Franco-American alliance of 1778. Uh, it was at this battle that the American forces surprised the world. The significance of Saratoga is seen in the surrender of Burgoyne's army, I think that's how you say his name, to the American forces. This hurt Britain's pride and showed that the United States might be capable of victory. Before this, there were American victories, but um, the British army was still showing its strength and believed that uh, the revolution could be, could be contained and that they could eventually, you know, take back their colonies and get them back in check. But after this surrender of this great British general, it was so surprising and so unexpected that it, it was seen as a total tur turning point and word spread throughout uh, even Europe. So um, in response to this, France was now ready to give to the United States every proof of its interest and affection, with France stating that the surrender of Burgoyne, Burgoyne uh, had created as much joy in France as if it had been the victory of their own troops. This was a unique opportunity because it could uh, for France even because it could rehabilitate the prestige of the French monarchy, who was embarrassed after the Seven Years' War, and act as an exhibit to the moral greatness of France by promoting a human advance in, uh, in the governmental process. So France could try and claim oh, we're, we're helping this smaller nation uh, escape tyranny. Oh, look at us, we're a great moral nation. Um, as well as be uh, an occasion for putting England in the wrong. Anytime England's wrong, France is, France is almost always on board. And there's a peek at my sources. So the Battle of Saratoga, this image depicts the Battle of Saratoga after the decisive victory for the United States. It was a popular engraving spreading more embarrassment for the British. French involvement in the American Revolution after 1778, so after the turning point of Saratoga. <clears throat> so with the French joining the American forces after the victory at Saratoga, how French involvement occurred changed. France finally had an open military alliance with the, uh, of, with the American colonies. The Americans had supported had support from the French military branches and the French treasury. This, this was the French Navy, the French uh, Army, and more. I don't remember what other branches. There's one more. Um, their treaty also embodied the first formal recognition of the United States as an independent nation, which was very significant at the time. Um, this, uh, like, they had not yet been recognized by another nation as a real country. Um, formally, actually, but um, France was the one to do it, and for France to do it, that means something. So that meant that there was also a sort of credibility gain for the United States by establishing an alliance with a powerful European nation. Um, also, to even get that recognition, recognition that they're an independent nation. Um, so by the time war, uh, the war ended. Many of the battles won against the British were won by a mixture of American and French peoples. So here's an artist rendition of signing uh, of the artist rendition of signing of the alliance agreement between France and the United States. Uh, you can see there's Ben Franklin, our main man in France, and some French representatives, I believe, standing around. Um, I wanted to find a better quality image it was pretty hard to blow it up when it got onto the um, PowerPoint page but these are scanned from the Library of Congress website uh, impact of France's involvement France's involvement in the American Revolution often remains 
underscored. Historians such as Stacy Schiff uh, emphasize the overall impact that France had on the American Revolution, both through providing aid and direct involvement. To put this in perspective, the American Revolution is said to have cost France more than 1.3 billion of their monies, uh, the equivalent um, of 13 billion dollars today. Historians believe that without France's funds, the revolution would have absolutely collapsed. Like the Evo the American Revolution would have failed. So, the factors leading up to France's voluntary involvement in the American Revolution proved to be very significant in history, especially the history of the United States. Why France? So a common question many people consider when hearing this information is what reason would France uh, tie up all these resources helping the United States? Most of the reasoning has to do with the aftermath of the Seven Years' War. However, part of the credit also goes to one man, Ben Franklin, our main man in France, uh, but we'll get to that. In the aftermath of the Seven Years' War, France was believed to have been waiting ardent, ardently in the wings uh, after the nation had not only emerged from the war in debt and shorn of virtually all her American territories, but because the nation also felt publicly and indecently disgraced. They were disgraced not just because of their loss, but because they had been displaced as the preeminent European power Despite a population three times as great as England, they had more people, they had more land, but they still lost to Great Britain, and they were supposed to be the preeminent power in Europe. So that was absolutely embarrassing to them. The peace after the Seven Years' War was seen by French leaders as only a pause in hostilities, and the American insurrection seemed like the instrument to, seem to achieve revenge. One source, I think it was this Franklin source, mentioned that that some French leaders were actually closely observing the factors leading to the American Revolution, like um, the Stamp Act tax, and they even sent people over to garner more information and have a better understanding of how this possible future insurrection might help them. Um, so France's objectives in the American Revolution, what were they? It remains obvious that the Franco-American alliance during the American Revolution greatly benefited the United States. However, it is not to say that France did not have its own objectives when it got itself involved in the war. It was a risky move, especially since France was seen as a government on the verge of bankruptcy, deliberately inviting a war that it might have easily avoided. But France had its reasons. So this was such a risky move for them at the time, but they had more reasons than just revenge. Um, their first major reason was to appeal to the dire uh, direction and momentum of French popular sentiment. Uh, a lot of French people were still upset, and they were on board with the American Revolution. They There were even tons of examples of Frenchmen um, finding ways to provide aid and munitions to the American Revolution before France was openly involved. There were examples of French uh, people going over to fight in the revolution or help out, like Lafayette. Um, anyway, moving on. A second major reason was defensive. French leaders believed that they were that whether England subjugated her rebellious colonies or lost them she would probably attack the French West Indies. This would be some way to like satiate the war. The British troops were already someplace where they could do that. So um, aiding the American cause might help to prevent this from happening, or so they say. More French objectives. As much as French advocates attempted to claim that they desired to be involved in the American Revolution for defensive purposes, this argument mostly existed to minimize the weightiest arguments against such a project. The actions that were taken by France imply that French intervention in the revolution was in short determined by motives of aggression. Um, it was well known that for years revenge had lain latent in the hearts of Frenchmen, and they desired to upset the current status quo. Uh, 
It is important to note that some historians have added France may have become involved for reasons such as gaining back territories in the Americas, harmonizing interests of the United States and Spain, or commercial interests, but if uh, it were for these reasons, um, they do not seem to be the main objectives. Franklin and France, our main man. Um, so starting in 1776, Ben Franklin served as the ambassador to France for the United States. Throughout this time, Franklin worked diligently, that's him right there, to garner support and eventually a military alliance with France for the United States. Franklin spent years begging for help with France granting America massive funds, a fleet, and an army due in part to his hard work. One tactic Franklin often utilized was reminding France of the onerous terms the British had imposed on them uh, in 1763, after the Seven Years' War. These terms included things such as English imposing restrictions on the French Navy, they didn't want it growing too big, um, assigning a commissioner to keep an eye on all port activities. Um, so basically this commissioner would keep track of everything that Fr the French did and report back to Britain. This embarrassed France more, fueling their desire of revenge. So when Franklin brought it up, they were like, oh yeah, we hate Britain, we need to get involved. So Franklin often also often stated that the America was fighting for France as much as France was fighting for America. And that his country had only respect for and gratitude to France. Conclusion. The aftermath of the Seven Years' War creates a visible through line to the... Dang it. Sorry. Creates a visible through line to the American Revolution. From this research, how Britain's victory during the Seven Years' War played a significant role in providing the Americans assistance from the French during the American Revolution can be observed. Britain's victory over France during the Seven Years' War uh, that had once altered world powers eventually culminated uh, in the outcome of the American Revolution. France's voluntary involvement in the conflict against Britain remains one of the most important factors leading to the American victory, and their decision to get involved can be directly attributed to their defeat during the Seven Years' War and the embarrassment that followed. Then, now here we go. Here's my bibliography. Here's some of the primary sources. Here's some more secondary sources and books. Um, there's a lot of pages of this. I think that's the last one. Thank you for watching, and let's see what the people thought of this presentation. So John, based on the information provided to you in my presentation, do you believe that the Seven Years' War had a direct connection to France's voluntary involvement in the American Revolution or not? I do, uh, because after uh, their beat down by the British in the Seven Year War, uh, not only from the loss of of territories and other holdings and things that the French government had. More importantly, the uh, uh, the desire for revenge by the French people. Mm -hmm. uh, those those all combined to really get the French involved into the war. And uh, without their support, uh, we probably either may have had a different outcome from the American Revolution, or at least it's taken a lot longer for the uh, colonies to be able to re beat Britain, so I think it awesome. had a huge impact. Awesome. Um, so is there any interesting piece of information that you feel will stick with you from this presentation? Well, I think two things. One, uh, I think that without the French involvement, uh, again, that either the outcome could have been different or ex definitely had ex at least extended the American Revolution much longer. Mm -hmm. But what I really liked the most was uh, that quote by Benjamin Franklin, and I'm sure I won't get it 100% correct, but uh, was that the American people were fighting as much for the French as the French would be fighting for the American people. 
and uh, I thought that was a great way of sort of appealing to the heart of the French people and uh, helping to nudge them on into the war and supporting the Americans. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. My pleasure. So, Bailey, based on the information provided to you in my presentation, do you believe the Seven Years' War had a direct connection to France's voluntary involvement in the American Revolution? Yes, and I'm also wondering if it's the backdrop for the last of the Mohicans. Okay. <laughs> well, is there any interesting piece of information that you feel will stick with you from this presentation? The fact that, uh, that France's cost to join the American Revolution is the equivalent of $13 billion today, I think that's absolutely insane, and I am that petty, and so I respect it. So, Nikki, based on the information provided to you in my presentation, do you believe the Seven Years' War had a direct connection to France's voluntary involvement in the American Revolution? Yes, I do. Okay. Is there any interesting piece of information that you feel will stick with you from this presentation? Uh, yes, what I found really interesting was the extent that Britain, Great Britain went to to embarrass the French in the treaty after the Seven Year War. Um, you know, the surveillance of their ports, embarrassing their ambassadors, um, the, uh, amongst other things that they did, but those really stuck with me. So I think those acts and not showing any compassion in that treaty and being basically what we call today a good winner, um, they, they really kind of gave the French a sense of revenge in joining the Americans first secretly and then actively and publicly to defeat them in our civil war. Awesome. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you guys for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the hybrid interview um, presentation idea. I think that it helped some of the interviewees to learn more about the importance of the Seven Years' War and the effect it had on the American Revolution, specifically with France's involvement. I really wanted to do this topic because I felt like it was a significant um, topic that's not as emphasized in school as it should be. So coming up with the hybrid interview idea, I felt that that was a way to kind of work in that education for um, the interviewees who had not quite received the proper education on the importance of the Seven Years' War. And I felt like uh, that is a way to show that I care about the topic of the Seven Years' War and how schools, education systems should emphasize this topic more and how closely it relates to the American Revolution, a topic so studied in American school schools, yet we barely know about the Seven Years' War. We, we barely discuss it. It's just like a footnote in our textbooks. So I feel like this is a topic that deserves to be expounded upon more. Thank you guys for watching this uh, presentation. I hope you have a great rest of your semesters.